Hi, yes, Jackie here with the LGFA, and we're on a call this afternoon looking ahead to the current account.ie All Ireland Club Championship semi finals coming up over the coming weekend. Plenty to look forward to. Our three special guests to look ahead to the action top left hand side of my screen is Jeremy McCarthy, freelance reporter from Cork in his car once again. Uh, <laughs> hope it's not too chilly in there this evening. Jerry, you seem to be rubbing your hands a little bit there, all right. Oh, that, that's just an intes- anticipation as always, well, Jackie. Good man. Good man. Good man. Um, Richard Bullock from Armagh is bottom left-hand side of my screen and Louise Gunn from Derry is bottom right-hand side of my screen. I have to say, three absolute encyclopedias on ladies Gaelic football joining me on today's call. Um, uh, folks, good to have you all. Good. Um, it looks like uh, Louise and and Richard, you might be in warmer surroundings as we as, as we speak compared to Jerry. Like actual you know. buildings, Jackie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. Good stuff. <laughs> Guys, we'll go from the top, right? Uh, Louise, you're um very apt to have on today because we have an intermediate club semi final featuring Steelstown Brian Oaks from Derry, and we also have. A junior championship semi final featuring Lavi from Derry. Uh, Richard, we have you on because of the Clonairn story and that particular rise, the first Armagh club to win a senior title indeed in Ulster um, in recent times. And Ger, of course, from the O'Donovan Rossa and Glanmire perspectives, two Cork clubs uh, in action at the weekend uh, O'Donovan Rossa against Gus Aran from Wexford in the junior semi final on Saturday. And on Sunday, Glanmire against Nafina in the intermediate semi-final. Um, Louise, I'll come to you first. Um, you've been togging out quite recently still in, in, in county colours as well, so your career is still is still going strong. Married to Alan, of course, Alan Gunn, renowned reporter up in that neck of the woods as well, all things ladies football. Couldn't have asked for a better person to come on and talk to me about Steelstown, Brian Oggs and um, Lavi and how they might get on at the weekend. Louise, what's the sense of anticipation? Great to see two Derry clubs uh, involved at this stage. It is, Jackie. It is. It's fantastic. And, you know, let's hope it gives the county the boost it deserves um, because clearly, you know, the calibre of player is in the county. Um, and Derry have been doing a lot of work in underage, um, you know, in the last few years. And we're starting to see that success. So um, let's hope, or, you know, the the fact that um, Steelstown and Lavi are both in all our club semi finals, you know, boosts the county even further. Um, I mean, Two, you know, two two very different stories. Steelstown are, are um, you know, they're they've been at the top of Derry senior club football now for the last four years. Of you know, they are previous junior Ulster champ club champions as well. Um, mm-hmm. so it's a natural progression for them um to you know be challenging on this stage. Um, and you know they there's what there's four teams left. They will very much fancy fancy their chances. Um. And Lavi are like their story is just remarkable. Um, seven years ago there wasn't ladies football in Lavi. Um, very much a a Camogie stronghold. Um, a former Glen teammate of my own, Mary Jo Boyle. She um married, went to Lavi, and um said she was going to set up ladies football in in the in the club in the parish, and that's exactly what she's done. Um. Two years ago, so t- basically 2022, they fielded a senior team for the first time um, at adult level, won the Derry Junior Championship, backed that up this year with the intermediate. And, and as you know, just because of the grading within the county, uh, the intermediate county champions in Derry go into the, the, pr- the provincial um, and the national junior competition and they have blazed a trail in it. Um, and, you know, I would not be surprised if they go the whole way. Wow. Good, plenty to look forward to from from a dairy perspective as well. Just you know, as died in the wool dairy, Louise, and you've touched on it. It 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 has to mean something when you get clubs progressing to this stage of the competition. You know, dairy have struggled in recent times at inter county level, particularly in the adult grade. There are some 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 shoots at underage level, but for this to happen, has to be good for the county. It it has to be, Jackie, and you know, um, you know regardless of what club you come from in Derry, you know, when you get to the stage, you, you want um, whatever club is representing your county and your province to, to go on and do well. And, um, you know, all we can hope is that the, you know, it, it just, it, as you say, it, it shoots, um, it shoots from the, the roots now. And, it, it, you know, we get all these players to, to buy into the county. Um, you know, if, if you can 
if you can manage to increase um, club participation by three or four players in every every club to go into the county at a senior setup, like you know, there's no reason why Derry can't reap the rewards that Lavi and that Steve's trying to have uh, should be good. Look forward to those two teams in action at the weekend. Uh, well described by Louise. So it's Ballinamore, Sean O'Heslins of Leitrim against Steelstown, Brian Oggs of Derry in the intermediate semi final on Saturday, 1 30 pm. And on Sunday, then we have uh, Lavi make the trip to Claire Morris in Mayo for a junior championship semi final. Just so that people know as well that all six games will be live streamed by the LGFA over the weekend. So keep an eye out for those. Um, Nice segue over to the fact that Derry have two clubs involved. Cork also have two clubs involved, Jaron. You've been banging the drum for O'Donovan, Ross and Glanmire in recent times. Here they are in the last four of their respective competitions. How are they going to fare out? Uh, very interesting question, Jackie. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see exactly how it pans out over the weekend. I would say that from speaking to both camps this week from my own podcast for Big Red Bench, shameless plug, um, no which you can find on social media. Uh, from speaking to the players from both clubs, they are zoned and they are ready for this. This is um, the two Cork clubs. Uh, it's an interesting tale. Glenmire lost three inter- intermediate county finals in a row um, until they got over the hump this year and became a senior club uh, by beating Neva Bon, a team that play- people may well have heard from last year. They went all the way to the Junior A All Ireland uh, final. So this is the Glanmire team in the in the intermediate championship this year. Very, very strong core to the team. They've got Ellen Toomey at centre back. They've got Cork Senior Abby O'Mahony in midfield, Ellen Murphy. Then they've got Neve McAllen, Orla Roach, and Evie Toomey playing lights out up front. And um they have a strong panel. They have a very, very young core to their team that they've been building for the last couple of years, and everything has just come right. They won the Cork Intermediate Championship. Um, I didn't tip them to win it, and they got over the hump and finally won it at the fourth attempt. But then they blazed the trail through Munster uh, very, very impressively. And last weekend, they were in London, um, where they got a real test from Tier Connells, it has to be said. It was a real battle and fair play to Tier Connors for giving them that. I think that has refocused a lot of minds in the Glanmire camp coming into the semi-final this weekend. The one thing with their semi-final with Nafena on Sunday in Mallow is both both clubs mm. are playing Camogie or have players playing Camogie 24 hours earlier. So it might negate a bit of the tiredness on both sides, which would be very interesting to see how that goes. But the fact that Nafina are making the long trip, the fact that Glenmire only have to go as far as Mallow, and the fact that they've been playing really, really well, apart from a you know pretty pretty shaky performance, I would say to be honest with you, last weekend perhaps in London, uh, than was expected. I still think I would expect them to win that game, but um, Nafina certainly have nothing to lose. So it's going to be absolutely fascinating to see how that goes. The other one, O'Donovan Rossa from West Cork in Skip Breen um, in their junior semi-final. Huge excitement down my neck of the woods for this one, Jackie, because the semi-final is taking place in Skip Breen. Gus Aran from Wexford are coming down and there is a massive crowd uh, on Saturday uh, expected in O'Donovan Rossa Park. A lot of grown swell of support behind this young O'Donovan Rossa team who, like Glenmire, lost last year's Cork LGFA Junior A County Final but bounced back to win every single championship game this year and not just that but um, have gone similar to Dan Meyer have blazed a trail through the provincial championship winning on the road in Tipperary winning on the road in Clare and then beating the Kerry champions in Mallow before they were also on their travels last weekend to Scotland uh, where they beat the Glasgow Gales and beat them quite convincingly 2-14 to 2 goals this is a very very young and a very hungry team from O'Donovan Rossa. Probably the one name that a lot of people might know is Laura O'Mahony, who's the yeah. Cork senior. But this O'Donovan Rossa success has been built on their defence and the, their ability to shut down opposing um, attacks. And they've done that very, very impressively in Cork this year, but even more impressively um, in, in Munster. Uh, I don't know much about Gus Aran. I'll be holding my hand up and be quite honest with you. But the crowd that I'm expecting to see in Skibreen and the groundswell of support, just not just in West Cork, but throughout Cork, with this O'Donovan and Rossa team, um, it's going to be a very, very special occasion on Saturday and hopefully from an O'Donovan and Rossa point of view, a winning one. So they're hot tickets. Um, but you are, so that's Saturday, current account at AL Ireland Junior Club semi-final, O'Donovan and Rossa against Gus Aran. 1.30pm, O'Donovan and Rossa. Uh, headquarters on Sunday then we have Glanmire of Cork against Nafina of Meath in the intermediate semi-final and that's in Mallow at 2pm you did say prior to the, the quarter-finals Jared, that you expected both Cork clubs to get through but not without um, a test and Glanmire certainly got that so that should stand mm. to them of course Um, 
Sunday then, Richard, we have the two senior club championship semi-finals at Kilmacud Cross from Dublin. Uh, they take on the champions, Kilcurran Clanburn of Galway, 2 p.m. Parnell Park. That should be a, a cracker. The winners of that will play the winners of Clanaren from Armagh against Bally McCarbury from Wadford, 1.30 p.m. in Clanaren on Sunday. Um, Richard, what are you reading into this game, Clanaren against Bally Mac? The fact that Bally Mac have the long trek. Uh, Clonairn on home soil, fresh from from that Ulster title win, they must be absolutely bouncing into this All Ireland semi final. Yeah, Jackie, I mean it's going to be a big occasion, and uh, while Leave Henderson, the captain, said after the Ulster final that the the, the marked Ulster all year, and this was game six of six. I mean they're happy to go on to seven and eight if if need be, in their in their championship run, and I think. I mean, not not quite like like Ballymac and Waterford in terms of what forty one, forty two in a row now, but certainly Clanern. I mean, just listening to to Louise about uh, Lavi being sent up recently, and even your your message to me the other day saying, "Look, you know, come on and talk about the rise of Clanern." And you know, it it hasn't, it hasn't, because obviously this has been historic for Armagh as a whole, and I think even with uh, Greg McGonagall coming in now as the incoming county manager, that's even helped. And look, there's always club rivalries in every county, but. I think that's even helped give it that bit extra interest in the county and everybody um sort of having a look to see what's going on. And I think, uh, again, like Louise said with Derry, like Armagh have done well as a county in recent years, but there's been that little need to sort of nudge on into the last four and final and potentially winning an All-Ireland. So if Clannarin can set the trail and and obviously, as, uh, as some people will know, they wear, wear orange jerseys as well. So... I think, you know, Clannarn maybe in ways, it, it hasn't been a, a meteoric rise in the sense that they've the won 12 county titles in 18 seasons, the first one just after. A lot of people have heard the name Marie Howe, a great, a great sort of lady and driving force behind um, ladies football in Clannarn. She passed away in the summer of 2006 and right, yeah. and they won their first title that year and then and then have gone on from there. But, you know, our, our colleague Jerome Quinn actually remarked at the start of the the live feed from the Ulster semi-final against Money Glass when they were comprehensive winners against Money Glass at home, which probably to outsiders was seen as a surprise result. It's a it, it's a built-up area and, and and the team the team comes from a fairly small catchment area. You could pretty much throw a blanket over it, and it's remarkable because again, some of your some of those joining us and this won't be familiar. I mean, Lurgan's not a particularly large town and probably the way things are up here, they draw on maybe 60% of the population in terms of Gaelic games. And, you know, there's there's five clubs in the town, St. Peter's near Clannaran, you have St. Paul's, you have, you have Arog in the outskirts of town, you have Clannagale, you have a couple more clubs just outside in in the terms of Sarsfields and Wolf Tones. So, you know, for, for Clannaran to do what they've done over the last 18 seasons, but also even last year, they, they won an Armile GFA Club of the Year and they did a clean sweep of the top-level league and championship at every age group, including senior. They've done that again this year, apart from the fact they've also fielded a B team in the under-16 championship. They won the Division Four championship. They've fielded three adult teams for the first time. Uh, they won the Fela Cup as well. So, um, it's been remarkably successful and remarkably consistent and you know, they've actually, they're a fantastic community club. They've set up a netball club in recent years as well. They won Netball Northern Ireland's Club of the Year as well. The fervour is incredible. They, they, they go to do a guard of honour when Caroline O'Hanlon's Northern Ireland netball team come home from major tournaments to set up watch parties. Um, They're all planning to go to watch Northern Ireland play the Republican netball on the 17th of December. Watch Caroline, who's a big hero, even though obviously she's the rival club, Carrie Croppen in football. Um, But they'll hope to be, to be going to Croke Park now instead. So, it, it, it's the it's the youth and, and and again I mentioned Marie High earlier and you know her sister Roisin Bell is now the club chairperson and and again Roisin fantastic lady she represents the club so well and from a family point of view her, her niece Neve Henderson is the captain and and Neve's brother Ryan who you may remember he scored four goals for him against Wexford back about maybe um, 10 12 years ago um, uh, Ryan was manager for a couple of years, and then James Daly came in, and obviously James is you know a, a very eminent manager as well. Last season, probably we've been unlucky with time, and um, they they, they went to a replay against Carrick Prop, and they won the replay, but then they had to go, you know, they were away to Donham one week later. Maeve Moriarty was injured, David Henderson was injured. Greg has come in now, and look, Greg has a fantastic record of getting teams to All Ireland finals. So I think everybody in our man, certainly around Lurgan, is hoping that, that that continues. I mean, with with Monaghan and Dublin in the past, we know what he's done there. So I think having that experience, confident manager. But I think the, the biggest thing, listening to the players, is that he sort of reset their sights this year in terms of almost the longer they went on without a breakthrough in Ulster, the, the bigger barrier it became. And he more or less said, look, we 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 got to do this. This is 
just win an Armagh isn't enough anymore. And they went about the Armagh Championship this year, uh, I wouldn't say with an arrogance, but with a certainty. And they they did very, very well. And they, they did their, they, they sort of did their big game plan in terms of, like Clodagh McCambridge is probably their, their their best and highest profile player. And she's a luxury to, to, to stick at fullback in a match that you're winning by maybe 30, 40 points. And she occasionally come out like a sort of souped up sports car to the guards to kind of, you know, demonstrate how sleek in the acceleration and so forth. Maybe made two runs in the game and the rest of the time she's sort of standing quietly in the shadow of her own posts. But, you know, they've done what they needed to do going forward into, into future games. And look, they've got most of their players would, would, would be fairly well known. I mean, you, you've got um, a, a range of age to you. You've made Moriarty at 38, still going strong. Avin Donahue, who scored a great goal against Money last in the Ulster semi-final. Uh, she's 15, and you've then, you know, a lot of young ones on the bench as well. You have some of the club grandees still around. Uh, we have Murray R- uh, Mags McElhinn, or um, Laura Brown and so forth. And I don't know if you saw Vincent Kearney had a great piece on the RTU website during the week of how Mags and Neve Coleman had been photographed together in America 23 years ago. Neve Coleman was two, and and, and Mags was... Um, Definitely say she was she was very young as well, still at that <laughs> stage. But they're they're now obviously you know playing together in this panel, and apparently um Mags had told Neve's parents then that she'd she'd like to win an Ulster title with her in the future. Now Mags again, some people know Mags has had her her, her battle with with cancer in recent years as well, but she's come back. She's still playing her two her two sisters. Mags mainly comes off the bench these days. Her two sisters, Catherine Magdalene and Catherine Lawless, now the goalkeeper. She's starting Gronya a. Uh, Carvel as well now she's at cornerback so so they're still there they're still uh, still fighting hard but you know somebody like Neve Coleman um Neve Coleman I mean mentioned her her parents her, her dad Tommy uh, managed the Clannaren men's team to their first senior championship winning our man 58 years a couple of seasons ago so real real football family Dervla Coleman Neve's younger sister she's I mean, she's been capped at senior level by Northern Ireland netball. She's been in the Armagh squad, but she's, you know, she's six foot tall. She's a fantastic athlete. At times, probably she's been almost a frustrating enigma because we haven't necessarily seen the best of her. She has absolutely stepped it up in the last couple of months and uh, got player of the match in the in the Ulster final against Breda. So all those pieces of the jigsaw, and look, I'll, I'll, I'll stop saying, but you could go through basically their whole team kit. How it has been... Um, she started every match for Armagh this year, and yet she's a player that maybe goes under the radar. And um, you know, players like that, they've got the players, Jackie. And, and I, th- I think the reason I'm, I'm I'm sort of mentioning so many players, they've had most of those players for a while, so it's no surprise that they've done as well as they've done. But you know, they haven't done it before. There's a freshness to it now, so I think I think it's more excitement than nerves at this stage. They, they set a lot of store by winning Ulster. They've got that done. The pressure's off. Does that mean they'll kind of? They'll not kick on, it may do, but I think look, they're just they're on an adventure now and they're saying, Well, let, let's see where this goes. There's no pressure anymore. So I would say Sunday with home advantage is going to be a great occasion in Lurgan. There's going to be people, I think, from other Armad clubs turn out as well. And as I say, it's a close knit community. It's a small area. An awful lot of people who would be involved with the club will will not have to get in a in a car or any form of transport to get to the match. So I think we'll we'll see a big crowd on the anybody watching the live stream will see a good um a good turnout. Yeah, there'll be lots of bums on seats, I'd imagine as well, Richard. Keep going, by the way. I could listen to you all day long talking about about mm. football phenomenal. That's what, you know when I said uh, an, a, a a literal encyclopedia on on our ma matters and beyond. Absolutely incredible from the outside looking in, Louise. Um, the Clannaren have a real shot here, don't they? I mean. Uh, Look, Bally Mack obviously won won Munster um, and for the second year in a row and have that storied history and that storied tradition. It's a lovely novel semi, semi-final pairing, as is Crokes against Kilcarran Clumbern. They've never met each other. Uh, I stand to be corrected on that at senior level. Um, are you getting a sense that Clannaren can take a... a Richard talked about the, the six steps along the way that they can take another step forward here. Very, very much so. Um, you know, you get this far after coming so far and you're like well why you know let's not just stop there um i think as richard touched on at home advantage is going to be crucial it, re- it really is you know valley mac have a long journey ahead um and clan air will want to use that to to their full advantage um you know richard was naming names there and you know, it's it's very you know it's very evident, and I've watched Clan Aaron play that you know they have the players 
that have, are of that highest level to be able to you know get um to, to get these rewards and 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 win these games um just uh, you know they just for so long were kind of looking maybe not as as far as they should um should have and and that's why they, they had struggled when it when it came to Ulster and you know if someone sets your stall out as Greg openly has said in February of this year he said we're targeting Ulster then you know all of a sudden your eyes open a lot wider mm-hmm. and uh, and you you go on that journey knowing that it is a six step process not just a, a two step or three step within your own county so um you know this you know, we haven't talked about step seven, but quite probably quite, you know, after that final whistle and after the celebrations or the day or two of enjoying their, their Ulster title, they were like, well, hang on here, potentially another two steps. Mm. Let's just give it a, a real, real good go. And, um, you know, like Bally McGab are so, they're so steeped in history, club club football history and all that. But, you know, um. Clan Aaron have nothing to be afraid of, nothing to shy away from. Um, and uh, as Richard said, it's it's going to be really it's it's going to be a really interesting battle. Yeah, so going into the Lions then, um, uh, Jerry, I think Louise raised a very valid point there that <clears throat> you know once you win your county title, obviously that's first and foremost on your list of priorities, and then you go and win a province. Now you're just one step away from a potential All Ireland final, and this this applies to all clubs uh, across the board. Uh, you know, Kilcarn Clambern have been there and done that, but opportunity knocks for so many at this point of the season now. Yes, and I think what will decide all of these semi finals and all of the grades at this weekend uh, across junior, intermediate, and senior is how well the younger players on these teams handle the occasion. The established players, you expect them to do their job. They're used to this. Inter county players have seen, been there, seen that. They've been involved in big atmospheres. But the younger players in these panels, all along, it's been an adventure. They've got over the hump of winning their county title. But now the pressure has ratcheted up because the very thing you just mentioned, you're one step from an All-Ireland final. And how a player reacts to that and behaves and plays the way they normally do will dictate a lot of these matches at the weekend. I think, Jackie, it's a cliche, but there'll be very little in it. But I do agree with Louise. I think home advantage at this point of the year, whatever about the, the actual competition, but considering the way the conditions might be is absolutely vital. Now, we know Glanmire don't have home advantage because they're playing in Mallow, but Glanmire and Sarsfield's Camogie the day before have been through a lot with a lot of flooding in recent times and the, the goodwill of the local communities and other clubs coming on board to give them access to pitches has made a positive effect on that team. As for O'Donovan Rossa, it's a very rural area when you're talking about cities in West Cork or well beyond Cork. Um, it's a long trip for Gusseran. It's a long trip for Nafina. Um, how they handle uh, the fitness and the sleep and the travelling will dictate how well they do on the day as well. And it applies to the other two semifinals, or the other semifinals and the other competitions as well. It's going to be fascinating, um, but it will boil down to, I think, how you deal with the actual location. Because if you have a big crowd that you've not used, you're not used to as a player and you're dealing with an unusual atmosphere and you're looking around you all of a sudden and you're seeing familiar faces, Sometimes that can be the, the it's it's the it's the one percent at this day, time of the year, Jackie. Like when you get to the inter county junior, intermediate, senior, it's the one percent that makes the difference in getting over the line. I do think home advantage is going to be huge for all the clubs this weekend. I don't think every team playing at home is going to win, but I do think the two Cork teams are in their respective semi finals. Um, after that, and when you get to an All Ireland final, I have no idea. But um, it's a special occasion for all the clubs involved. A lot of travelling, a lot of atmosphere, a lot of excitement. Bigger crowds than you'd be used to as well. So it's who handles the situation best will win all these semi-finals. So, Jerry, you're predicting O'Donovan Rasta to, to beat Gus Oran and you're predicting mm. Glenn Meyer to beat Nafina. So I'm going to leave the other two uh, to you, Louise, before I go to Richard mm. for his senior final prediction. So the, uh, the, the particularly, uh, specifically the games involving the Derry clubs, uh, Ballinamore, Sean O'Heslands uh, against Steelstown, Brian Oggs in the intermediate. I think you you've a you've a strong feeling for Steelstown on this one. Uh, yeah, look, you know, I, I hope Steelstown win. I do. Um, it's you know, Jer hit the nail on the head. It's just how do you deal with an occasion? It's the first time for Steelstown to be in. Well, apart from the junior, obviously, but you know that was in two thousand fifteen. But you know, um. Steelstown have 
they have a lot of experience. They have a lot of cool heads. They have a lot of calm heads. Um, we saw that in the Ulster final against um, Glen Um, They have experienced um, Ulster final defeat in 2021 against Canale by a point. Um, that has been a big a big driving force um, for them. I spoke to Emma Doherty um, during this week, just, and she, you know, and, and even their captain, Aoife uh, McGaugh, alluded to it. In their head that whole time through the Ulster final when the going was tough, it was like, we're not going to lose again. We're not going to lose again. And, you know, that just shows the mentality of this team. Um, um, they needed, um, the twice they needed to equalise, to, to, you know, to keep themselves in the game at full time, went to extra time. Um, and in an extra time against Glen Avey in that first first period, they, they found something from somewhere to to go six up. And they actually needed that because there was only a point separated separated them at the final whistle. They um, you know, they have they have a huge amount of experience. Um, the likes of Aoife, their captain, Catherine Canavan, Emma Doherty, Kira McGurk, you know, they've all played football for Derry mm. as well. They've been through the hard times with Derry, they've been through the good times with Derry. Um, you have um Orla Orla McGill in there. Um she's um 20, maybe 22 now. Um Richard will know through netball playing for Northern Ireland. You know, she you? she's a match winner. You know, she is on real. Um, so you know, Dara McKeever there. I just think they're a good solid all round package. Um, and they will they'll fight to the bitter end. But look here, they're going into the they're on into the unknown. Um, you know, I don't know anything about Balnamore either. Um, but you know, they'll they'll go in saying, you know, we we have a, we have as good a chance as anyone here. And Lavi then against Claire Morris. So it's interesting that the two dairy clubs are are, are travelling obviously to the west. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so how how will Lavi cope with with with, uh, with Claire Morris? Well, if one thing Lavi has in their favour for being an away game, they haven't had a home game yet in the province. Um, they've travelled for their Ulster quarterfinal, Ulster semi-final, and obviously the Ulster final was at a neutral venue. Um, it's a four-hour trip there uh, for them. Um, and, you know, so having travelled to all their other games, that especially with such you know such a young squad, you know I think that will that will not sort of uh, put them off maybe as much as had they had two home games and only ever travelled on a bus bus once to to a game, um so that you know they've they've got themselves into a routine, um now obviously they'll they'll have to travel on on Saturday down there um uh, because of the early throw in and things like that so um but you know Lavi Lavi don't know when they're beaten. That's what I have noticed about them through Ulster, particularly. You know, they have had they have pulled wins out of the bag with the last kick of the game. Um, you know, with um, you know, with, with what nineteen minutes left of the of the Ulster final, they trailed by what, five points. They looked down and out. Um, but uh, Dunlow never scored after the forty first minute, and um, Lavi just dug in and they kept playing and they you know they so they don't panic even with such a young team um they don't panic um they they have you know they have ex- when i say experience i mean you know they have dual players there um that play camogie for dairy as well um the likes of Epa shaw um Sinead mcgill um so you know that brings experience it doesn't matter what code you play you know, just having that experience and that um, on on a team can filter down through to the other ones. And um, you know, as Jer says as well, it's you know how how do the young players deal with it? And you know, what I like about young players is they just want to go and play football. So you know, the nerves maybe just don't affect them as much as they would the, the some of the older players who who have more time to think and 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 analyze and things like that. Um, Look again, it's a hard one to call. If Labby were at home, I would have said Labby hands down. Um, but they're not. But um, I, I'll not write them off, and I do hope they can get get over the line. Louise, before I let you go, right? Are, you, are we going to see you um, hogging out next year? I know you're in next room. Never, next... never again. <laughs> <laughs> the bits are in the bin. <laughs> okay, a phenomenal career, uh, Louise for Derry as well. Um, you kind of gravitated back from further out the field to, to take up position between the sticks how did that just how did that that move come about 
Um, well, I, probably, I think I had retired from uh, my club football. Yeah. Um, then um, someone asked, would I come back? And I sort of said, ah, maybe. Um, and then they, they, um, they, 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 not that they offered me the position, but it was basically, well, look, you have, it's your experience. You have the experience there of, of years of playing and would you go in between the sticks? So um, I did it. Um, wouldn't say it was one of my favorite positions. Um, and then obviously, um, I had that sort of then led to end up being playing again for Derry, um, as as goalkeeper. So, um, I think I think I've done all lines at some stage of my Absolutely. career, Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. But uh, I have to say, anybody that steps into that goalkeeper position, fair play to them because it can be a lonely place. And um, it, it's not easy. It's not easy, especially now with you know the way goalkeeping has evolved as well. You know, so uh, no, but no, bits are firmly in the bin. <laughs> right, you, you, you don't sound like a retired pair, Louise. Uh, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you remember the forwards union, the midfield union, the defenders union, and the goalkeepers union. Now, uh, Louise, you can tick pretty much yeah. every box as you say. I don't. Does that mean that uh, Jack of all trades and master of none? Then? <laughs> uh, I wouldn't go that far. Absolutely phenomenal player, um, Louise, and, and and best wishes and well done on on all you've achieved. Uh, Richard, I'm going to leave the final word to you. Um, so we look, these are going to be tight games. Um, Kilcarn and Clamburn are just over the past couple of years, they've just steamrolled everybody in front of them, to be fair. Um, but they are on the road against Kilmacud Croaks, albeit it's not Kilmacud Croaks' home ground per se, it's, it's, it's Parnell Park, which might be a little bit of a, a leveler in that sense. Um, <clears throat> you know, more so towards Kilcarn and Clamburn, who might not have fancied particularly a, a trip to to Croaks. Um Pan Aaron against Ballymac then. So who's your senior final pairing out yeah, of I think just, be, just before I just before I come to that Jackie um uh, Louise and you may have noticed Peter Check, the, the former football goalkeeper uh, started <laughs> playing ice hockey for the Belfast Jan. So when Louise gets to the stage where she can't run as a goalkeeper she can learn to skate. Um and of course uh, we we've also she, she can graduate eventually to Gaelic for Mollers and Ollers and 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 I think again that, that's that's another and, and like I'm a sport and I board member from a sin, so we're always encouraging lifelong sport. But Clanern embraced it for the first time, I think, this year. And of course they've about 80, 80 players, so they've like the three Gaelic from others and others teams already. So it's just they're they're a club that goes all in. But yeah, I mean, they were I think actually they, down the to national blitz, Richard. Go crack now. They were actually they were down. Oh, absolutely. It's it's yeah. like it's like the sort of world's largest hen party on tour, but um, <laughs> <laughs> naming no names but I, I, th I think the, the, the thing the, the other semi-final is probably uh, I still think it's, it's a goal with teams to lose even though they're, they're travelling up to Dublin they've, they've been there and done it before but the Clannern Bally McCarvey semi-final is, is harder to call and I mean Jerry was talking about how you know younger players and even a home advantage and I think in all of these games, while the likes of Clannern have quite a few county players and we've mentioned them and, and one I hadn't mentioned is Kieran Grimes who's been out a bit this year with injury, but she's come back and she kicks some absolutely sort of stupendous points off either foot and she always comes up with a a special or two. But I think these games will come down as well to how the non-county players perform and how they thrive. And I think maybe having home advantage could be of benefit to players like that. Not only young players, but I know, I know um, Jackie and Eve Murray on a few weeks ago and she's probably been, you know, in ways certainly outside of Lurgan, better known as a musician, but Again, uh, an accomplished scoring forward now, and that's one problem Clannern have had over the years. That a lot of players can chip in and take, you know, take their points, maybe pick up a couple of points. They haven't had a real scoring forward like, um, you know, an Amy Mackin or even a Kelly Mallon within club level in Arman. I had sort of tongue in cheek last winter said maybe they should go and get somebody like that as a player manager, and and maybe the job in the line wasn't as important as getting a scoring forward. But like they, they went and got one of the best managers in the country, and Greg McGonagall and Neve Murray stepped up as that scoring forward and. And, and and just the, I mean the, the the last kind of thing on that in terms of players who maybe the wider world including the opposition wouldn't know a lot about Maeve McCambridge Clodagh's younger sister who for the last few years has been a a real prospect at, at, at corner back to you know potentially be the next Sarah Marley or somebody for Armagh she's been moved into the forwards this year she's very very lively she scored a hat trick of goals in the first half at Drum Lane in the Ulster quarter final. Uh, after a wee bit of stick in the county final from the match commentator for 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 not going low and and, and simply taking her points, so 
somebody like that uh, up front, um, Neve Henderson, the captain, uh, mentioned Neve before. Neve played, remember Armagh under Mags McAlinton's captaincy when Laura Brown was actually a player of the match, won the 2012 Intermediate, All-Ireland Intermediate final, the, the drop down from senior for just one year and got back up with the first attempt. Neve Henderson played as a 17-year-old uh, in that team uh, under James Daly. She came back then 2014, do you remember our match came from nowhere, won the Ulster Championship, got yeah. to the Iron semi final. She played midfield with Caroline O'Hanlon. So Neve then she, she got a she got a bad knee injury and then she, she had a wee boy Noah and she, she hasn't played county football since. So this stage has been fantastic for her and, and I sort of hardly know watching them whether Noah's prouder of her, she's prouder of Noah. But again, to be doing to be lifting that trophy in, in, in that sort of wet afternoon in Healy Park with her with her wee boy there as well. And she spoke so well afterwards and I think players like that will rise to the occasion. So, you know, Clanner and I don't think they have too many weaknesses. Even even younger players, another totally unfamiliar name, Roisin Mulligan, um, young wing back. She could easily have been playing the match in the county final. And Eve Murray got it. One or two others were in the frame, but I really think with home advantage and and like maybe there's a bit of Armagh bias, of course there is, and and I suppose with the, the other thing we don't know and. Uh, I noticed she got injured. I think in the in the county final, um, Michelle Ryan again often of this parish. I mean, Michelle Ryan is is still a is still a massive force at club level. So I didn't. I must admit, didn't follow the the Munster Club Championship closely enough to know where she's at. And I know she hasn't been sort of maybe listed in the team sheet uh, for the weekend. Not that we're meant to from the email this afternoon reveal those things yet. But anyway, um, mm-hmm. so look, Clodagh McCambridge, the, the money last game. And I think Louise would, would back me up on this. Orla Prenters had such a good year for Antrim and have been a big part of Antrim doing what they've done and, you know, been shortlisted for national awards, won the Louise's Irish News Ulster All-Stars, the, the, the player of the year. Orla Prenters, first few minutes in the money last semi-final, people say, well, look, it was, it was maybe a soft-ish penalty that Clannaren got in the first few minutes was a big factor. But to me, one of the real moments in that first first five minutes as well First ball that was kicked down towards Prenter, Clodagh McCambridge, out in front, up in the air, takes it with both hands and just put her stamp on the game. And again, Clodagh's a fairly understated individual, but she's got the pace, she's got the... So whatever forwards uh, come to Lurgan on Saturday, they've got to get past Clodagh McCambridge. Maeve Moriarty does a good sweeping job. So they've a lot of... There's a lot of things there that they've already banked against Brady. They didn't, they didn't play very well at times, but they find a way through it. And maybe, yes, the goal was maybe slightly fortuitous. Dervla Coleman would admit she sort of slightly mishit the ball. It went to Neve. Neve scored the goal. That took off the, the pressure off them in the home straight. But I think there's enough there's enough about Clanner now. And while they don't have the pedigree of having been to these stages before, um, the, the potential has been there. They've now got there. And I don't think there's anything stopping them. And sometimes we see teams coming from, from in a sense, nowhere to the outside world. But the thing has been bubbling under the surface. They finally get their chance uh, and they never stop. And just finally, if I may say, in terms of the other two Ulster teams, uh, without uh, treading on Louise's dairy toes, I mean, I saw Lavi play against Clonmore, our Armagh junior champions in the quarterfinal uh, of Ulster. Big, strong, physical team. So I'm sure this time of year on heavy pitches, that will probably stand with them in, a, in an all semi semi-final or final. And I was with Louise at the, the Steelstown, the Navy, the Ulster Intermediate Final. And certainly, I don't know what Louise will agree, but it certainly felt like one of the, the best games I've seen this year. Uh, two teams really went at it on a on a sort of winter's afternoon up in, in Carrick Moor, uh, which is a great venue as well. And, and you know, Steelstown that day, the Navy were probably underdogs, but they really came and performed in the final. It was put up to Steelstown. Those things will benefit Steelstown when they're they're put to the pin of their colour in an All Ireland semi final. So, uh, again, and, and obviously we're, we're we're pretty well represented from Ulster in this call today. I would be, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised. Yes, absolutely, I'd be, be delighted, but I wouldn't be surprised if, if if we're talking about three Ulster teams getting to national finals. And I think, you know, that would be a big big boost for the sport. Derry needed probably in a slightly different way to Armagh, but certainly from an Armagh point of view, Clonairn getting to the final would be massive. So I'm going to stick my neck out and say, look, they've made history already by getting, by, by you know, that was their first Ulster final they got to. There hadn't been an Ulster finalist even from our mass since oh. 1977. Um, they've done that. I see no reason why they won't get to Croke Park. And again, you know, for an Arma team to get to, to Croke Park for the All-Ireland final, be the first since 2006. Mags McAlin was there that day. Maeve Moriarty was there that day. So there's a certain amount of full circle here. And I'll leave the final thought I'll leave you with that photograph 20, 23 years ago in America 
the two-year-old Neve Coleman, the teenage Mags McAlinton. Uh, if the two of them end up in Fruit Park in you know before Christmas, it'll be a it'll be a pretty good day, and and, and there'll be a lot of uh, there'll be a lot of people excited then about Armagh going into Division One in the new year. So you might have to you might have to listen to more of us in in, in the next the next couple of months, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Not a problem, Richard. And I expect a thousand word uh, feature piece on that if it comes to pass as well. So um, yeah, fair play, absolutely brilliantly teed up, folks, for the weekend. Um, so just to run people through before we log off here, we have uh, on Saturday, O'Donovan Rossa against Gus Oran, Junior Championship semi final one thirty, Balnamore Sean O'Helsons against Steelstone Brian Oggs is an intermediate club semi final one thirty. Sunday then, junior semi final Claire Morris against Lavi, intermediate semi final Glan Meyer against Nafina, senior championship semi finals Clonairn against Ballymac and Kilmacud Crokes against Kilclaren Clonbarn. Uh, intermediate final at 3 pm at Saturday, 16th of December, Croke Park, followed by the senior final 5 pm Sunday, uh, Saturday, December 16, Croke Park, and the junior finals for Parnell Park, Sunday, December. 17 at 2 p.m. So we will know our finalists after the weekend. Uh, today's guests, Jen McCarthy, Richard Bullock and Louise Gunn. Thank you so much for coming on today. I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you. Thanks, Jackie.